Hi guys and welcome to The Buzz Online School by Join Bands Not Gangs. Today we have our very first guest that we're going to interview, Mr. Marvin Weavers. Our studio <laughs> under clap us a believe. Marvin is one of those people that is incredibly inspirational and has beat all the odds to be in a very successful corporate position today. And it was all because of having a door out through music and also doing the right things to get where you are today. So Marvin, where come you from Dawn in tell us a bit of your story. Sure. So I was um, 33 years old. I was originally from Alsis Rivier. Um, so I was born in the city. I went to Reins High School. I um, matriculated in 2009. And yeah, that is where I my youth of my young life, the most of my young life, was spent in Alsis. And what was the challenges growing up? So obviously, um, Alsis, Alsis River, if you tell anyone you are from Alsis, they already have some sort of like, um, okay, gangsters, drugs, um, poverty. So they already put you in a box that, oh, look, because a lot of people from, if, if you just hear the word Alsis River, then it means, I'll escape your alcohol, I'll you on a box. In. So obviously, growing up, you, I was literally faced with gangsterism on a daily basis. Um, gang fights and I was actually telling someone not too long ago at my current job because uh, he couldn't believe like the kind of he didn't grow up in those circumstances so he didn't know how it would be in such a situation and I said I would never forget I went to school and one of the girls who had drugs and he said I would drink together and 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 that just stuck with me like that's the kind of thing that you will take with you for the rest of your life. Like, flip, if you're not going to do something, you weet you have nog younger, um, a younger brother and a younger sister, if they're going to do something with them, if they're going to do something to you, but you just have to push through and, you know, just, you just have to keep yourself, or I have to keep myself busy outside of my community. I make it obviously for my baie besig gewoon die kerk in. So, Marvin, um, when they asked you to take those drugs, did you take the drugs or did you fall for the threat or did you no. take your chances? I had so hard loop. I had it never done. Because, I mean, that is your first ticket into the whole gangsters and all you doing work for them and you starting to just fall into the whole trap of just for one day you had to take a parcel and then the next day you take a parcel. The third day you create on a five run and a five run is a if you're about 10 years old to 5, and back then it was a lot of money. Yeah. And even now, say, for a kind of 10 years old, say, what for me to do So, so now they weet what it is, but obviously, um, my mouth was bewust gemaakt van die goede wat daar buiten kan aangaan. Mm. So I never took it. I was just like, ah, uh, nee. And I ran. I mean, I just went to school. And I was always looked at like, um, I rem- um, the Anakin Sapa, um, he also sold um, Dacha. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I know you just had this whole thing about me being not. I had just of my good gevraam to do, and I get it never said because I always knew what it was. I always knew that it was something to. I mean, as innocent as what people would say. Let's use the word innocent as weed. It's still something, and you at the young age, you get you where you can and fall And yeah, I just never became part of that, and I just said no, and I just went on with my life. So these opportunities to fall into bad lifestyle choices at a very young age in these neighborhoods. Definitely. Tell me about an opportunity that was your ticket to not choose that lifestyle. I was invited once with a friend. It's actually quite crazy because this one friend um, was a friend. Um, I was with my mom and my mom and I was with my mom and it was like sad to see how his life has turned. Was, wow. You won't even recognize, even the house, both his parents has passed away. Um, and hello, he says, no sort of a drug, he says, I can work on them. Anyway, so I got an opportunity once to go with him to church, and I went to the New Apostolic Church for the first time. My family is in New Apostolic, and um, I had the nice music heard, I had the block flatter seen, and that was just like, wow, I want to play the recorder. And I was introduced to the recorder that Sunday after church, and then I went back the next week, and the next week I went, and again, and I started playing recorder in church. So that was like such my ticket, but it's just like I saw something that I really enjoyed. So every Saturday and Sunday I would play soccer, and I would also be in church. And then not long after that, um, later on, I wanted to learn an instrument. And then one of the ladies in church said, well, I, why don't I've tried, there was two other instruments I tried, flute and trumpet, but Lynette then said, well, why don't you try violin? 
Um, and I said, okay, sure. And I didn't have a violin. She said, no, it's fine. I'll give you a violin. Just come to my house and we'll see. And my first lesson, I think I was about 12 years old and I enjoyed it so much because it was literally the one thing that I looked forward to. And then, then I started playing the violin, went on for lessons for like two years with her. Um, started and playing. volunteered. She, she didn't charge you. Say it for me. I'm saying, no, it for me to charge you. Um, she even once came to my mom and said, like, she doesn't want any money. Wow. Um, literally, she just did it for free and. Um. <laughs> Do you think if there was a money barrier, like you had to pay for the lessons, you obviously would have never been able to yeah. access? I don't think I would have um, had access to that. Yeah. Because um, later in my trek, now obviously no, I was going to go to the trek, I wanted to learn more. I had to go to a music center, or I found it about the whole music center in Peru. And obviously, there for all the geld. So I had to go get a job in order to work oh, wow. because my mom was single and my mom didn't work. So I can't expect my mom. And I wanted this badly. Like, I wanted this badly. Um, and I was still in school. So I got myself a weekend job um, wow. from Standard 8 to Ready. No, Standard 8 to. Oh. Well, was great, fans, ten. Yeah. <laughs> great ten. And my, got myself a weekend job to pay for my for my for my own lessons. And wow. that took me through through uh, my music school. Um So yeah. one good decision led to uh another good decision, but it was kind of the, the joy of the music spurned you on Def to definitely spurred. And <laughs> yes, it did. And that also, the other thing that also happened is to make um, a 16 year old. Now you also learn to take up responsibilities by starting to work, um, doing a weekend job. And in that weekend job, you learn things that you later in your life will be able to So it's like you learn to wake up early, to go to job, to be on time. Yes. Just discipline as a young adult. Um, because in vandag in my professionele um, leven en werk kan ik daar goed wat ik al daar geleerd heb op je orde van 16, 17. I can apply it now. With yeah. some people, um, I know quite a few, but of people not in my current job, but just people in general, um, they all is a lot. They just didn't maybe had the experience of going, starting having a weekend job and just went to university or just started working or maybe didn't even work and they just lay at home. They just mm -hmm. don't have that key interest of like, I've got, I need to be there, I need to get the salary, I need yeah, to go yeah. work, I can't just have everything fall into my lap. Um, yes, yeah. because, because the only thing that's going to fall into your lap is a Sasa grant. And who can live on 400 rands a month? Yeah. Let's be honest now, they are, it's, it's, it's handcuffs no, literally. For, for peanuts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my political yeah. comment in episode one. Um, but uh, Marvin, you brand on each the CC. Yeah, um, there was... <laughs> Grad 11, Grad 11, I was introduced or became very curious with, I got involved with wrong friends on school. Every day is now a teenager here, I know, so it's like, um, all is a cool group. So I started smoking weed eventually. Okay. Um, but that was the worst thing ever because I failed grade 11. So, wow. yeah, I failed grade 11. And on since five kinders, I was all in, I got back to and my mother said, I'm going to work. And I said, no, I'm not going to go work. Wow. And she was like, okay, she respected that. Because I had a weekend job at the time. So I said, okay, cool. So you're still going to do the holiday and then you're going to go back to school. She said, I said, yes, and she supported that. And I said, and I told her, because all my five siblings, I'm the middle one, they've all dropped out of school. So my both my elder siblings, I was still on school and my one sibling that was younger than me, I think by the time she dropped out, or she was doing some course. But none of them completed high school, and I wanted to be the first one to complete high school. Amazing. So I went back to high school, and I completed grade 11. Amazing. Stopped smoking weed, cut out all the wrong friends. Wow, that year. That year, I took my music to cook, so I got lost. Um, and I went back to the music center to go. Wow. Got a new teacher, and sure, that year. And that also led me to go study music, to get into the certificate program at Salamos University after my matric year. Um, after that, landed me to get an internship at the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra. And you became manager of that? <laughs> yes, later on. And I, then you did a second degree? Yeah, and I'm busy with my third degree. So, so it can be done. And this is, and, and so I want to touch on some, some points, Marvin, because we have a, it's not a, it's a short, unfortunately, it's a short form interview. But I want to ask you some of the, the things that people may have picked up what you just said. You said 
um, your mom said go work, but you chose school. Now, there's this thing of like, do I honor my mother or do I do what's right for me? Um, and in this case, you still honored your mother because you made a success of your life. But at that point, you had to choose for yourself. What advice would you have for children or for young people where their parents maybe want them to do something, but they, their inner man says, this is the way? Um, I just where do you get the courage? <laughs> you look back and you look at people and that is no disrespect to anyone where I'm from because I've had great role models in my community. But then you also look at the bigger picture. Most people or most of your um, your, your peers they just at home and doesn't even make a come equally to I don't want to be stuck there in this in, in the range. I don't want to just be here. I, I know there was bigger than just going to school and doing a job at Sopra. And I can be Sopra to work as a weekend. I as that's mm. where I started. But I knew there was I, I, there was just something else I wanted to do and I wanted mm. to get out of my community. Yeah. Um and I knew that with inside of me there was this drive. That I had that, the, and I saw, I saw, I was exposed to a world outside of Alsis Rowan, outside of the rains. I saw there was a old world. I was introduced to things that I don't think I would have ever been introduced if it wasn't for the friends that I met along the way at the music mm. center. At um, actually at the music center, I mean, the first time I went to the cinema, I think I was ten at ten. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just imagine being ten at ten next to the cinema, and just was like, wow. You, and then the next time, you, another friend invites you to um, by the aquarium to go and see. You see a school school, you go for the first time waterfront. You see a whole world and you're like... There's a world out there. There's a world out there. There's a world out there. So that's that's one of the points at um, in in our program um, that we, we've made a point of that. Is ons moet by voorbeeld, ons gangster oukies. You have to go show them there's a world out there. Ga naar die movies. Gaan klimme berg. Je yes. weet, gaan klim tafelberg. Je weet, do something that all the tourists do. So why are we not going to the V&A? Why are we not going to climb Table Mountain? Hoe kom gaan ons nie op die boot trippies, jy weet, in die Sunset Cruise nie, want dit is flippendeer, joh. Oké, okay, maar... Dit <laughs> <That> is. <laughs> maar, uh, oké, okay, so um, to wrap up, Marvin, um, two, two points of wisdom. If you could give wisdom to... Um, yourself as a 16-year-old kid, um, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? Read, read, listen to your teachers, do your schoolwork, study, work hard at school, leave the friends. Yeah, listen to your school teachers, because I didn't listen to my school teachers. And I mean... Um, now as an adult, I was like, flip, I can't letter to all the because they were all right. They were like, just do your work and do well in school. Mm. And that can feel later like dear up mark. You can later like good slag and gaan studeer. And they were literally the people who were wanting to help me. And I was just like, I was I didn't want to listen to yeah, them yeah, at yeah. the time. The 16 year old Marvin. But read, read, because ook in my matric year, I had my first Then I fell in love for reading for literature. Wow. And also reading also opens up an entire a new world for, for, for as a as a person who reads i mean i, I just want to say this about marvin just hold that thought for his current job as a part of the i can i say what yeah. you yeah, can say so, yeah so i work for um the allen and jill gray philanthropy but for the company called um jake's Harville fellowship so he's the guy that runs the Jake's Harville <laughs> Fellowship. <laughs> kind of, kind no, of. No, no, no I, I wish I could say I'm, I, run the, I run the Jake's Harville Fellowship. So I yeah. work in the selection team. So I'm a selection administrator. And everyone that comes through our bursaries and to get up, um, into our bursary or um, get to be part of a fellowship, they go through the process where I'm involved with yeah. the selection process and all of that. So Marvin is now the guy that is opening up the doors for others that are pushing. So... I'm going to conclude our interview. Marvin, I'm so sorry it had to be so short. I can, yeah, I can uh, follow up there. Eh? Um, but the, the wonderful thing that I'm taking from this is just the tenacity and I can you for 10 years and just the way that you've pushed. And if there's an issue, I feel that you can't say that you Dit was moeilijk om te studeer in, in termen van die loudness en hoe bezig het is by die huis. En ek onthoud, was a tijd wat Marvin gewerk het 
en dan kom hy by die huis, as die slaap. sê nou vir my as ek raag ja. is, hy slaap van 8 tot om 3 uur in die ochend. Of vroeger so van 7 tot om 3 uur uit, ja. <laughs> dan staan hy op 3 uur in die ochend, is die enigste tyd wat het stil was in sy huis, so met sy sister en sy man, nie dat hulle so noisy was ja. nie, maar die beerd. Ja. En dan hy studeer van 3 tot 6 in die ochend, en dan het hy gaan werk. Gaan werk. En dat is... As jy, dis die type work ethic mense, dit val nie uit die lichtheid nie, dit is not luck, het is ja. deersettingsvermoe. Definitief. So Marvin, baie dankie vir jou baie tyd. Baie um, Ja, baie dankie. Dankie. <laughs> Episode 1 done! Sure. Sure.